So you may have heard that Trump had a big win in the Illinois primary on March 15th, netting 52 out of 69 delegates up for grab in that state. Given those numbers, you might be inclined to believe that Trump won the vote by a wide margin. Not so. In fact, Trump only obtained 39% of the popular vote, compared to Ted Cruz, who got 30% of the vote and 9 delegates. Kasich actually managed 8 delegates on just 20% of the vote, while Rubio, who won 9% of the vote, ended up with no delegates. The state of Illinois has a total of 69 delegates in play, and uses a two-tiered system called the loophole system. 15 of the 69 delegates are for the statewide winner. In this section, you vote directly for the candidate of your choice. The candidate with the most votes across the state wins 15 delegates. This is simple enough, but there are 54 more delegates up for grabs, and this is where it gets weird. Of the remaining 54 delegates, three are provided to each of the 18 districts in the state, with each housing just over 700,000 people. The way each of the districts divides up their delegates, however, leads to a bit of a problem. Each district has a number of delegates that have pledged their support to a particular candidate. Each candidate's campaign submits a list of these names and in doing so, provides delegates that people in that district can vote on. The top three vote-given delegates of each district gets voted in, and the candidates who they support get one delegate. So, for example, in District 1, you can vote for Burke Trump, Alonzo Trump, or Hillary Trump, if you want to vote for a Trump delegate. On the other hand, your options for a Cruz delegate are Hayes Cruz, Danaher Cruz, or Tankos Cruz. Apologies if I pronounce his names incorrectly. Essentially, in your district, you're voting for the delegate who has pledged his support for a particular candidate, and not the candidate himself. It's important to note that these names are largely meaningless. They aren't people who campaign, and most people who are voting won't know any of these names at all, and the name that matters is the candidate's. So why is this weird? Well, first, it's confusing. I've tried to explain this as clearly as possible after some research, but as you can see, it still takes some time to explain no matter what. There's also evidence that people are actually confused when they have to go in and vote, voting not only for the candidate himself, but also other people who will then be voting for the candidate for you. Additionally, some of you may have already realized that this particular system can lead to weird results, and you can observe one such weird result here in District 16. The issue here is that while you, as an individual, vote for a single delegate in your district, there are multiple possible delegates you can vote for. This means that, as a collective, how the votes are distributed between each candidate's delegates actually matter. In this district, Cruz's top delegate finished first by a wide margin, and Trump's delegates finished second and third. The other two Cruz delegates finished 4th and 5th. This means in this district, Cruz obtained one delegate and Trump obtained two, because the top three delegates are what matter. But when we look a little closer to details, we'll find this doesn't actually make sense given the vote distribution within the district. You can see here that the three Trump delegates got approximately 97,000 votes total in District 16, while delegates supporting Cruz obtained approximately 102,000 votes. But because of the way the system works, even though more people actually voted for Cruz here, Trump actually got twice as many delegates as Cruz from his district. This occurs because what matters is who comes in the top three and not the total vote count. So with Trump voters ignoring the third candidate more than Cruz supporters ignore their third candidate, combined with the fact that Cruz's top delegate won by such a large margin, ended up actually hurting Cruz because some of those votes could have gone to the other two delegates. This didn't happen in every district, of course, and in fact, most districts, a single candidate took all three delegates, sometimes by narrow margins, which is arguably not a desirable outcome either. And between the way districts broke down, and the 15 delegates for the statewide winner, you end up with a situation where a candidate has picked up 75% of the delegates in the state with less than 40% of the overall vote. I don't know about you, but I'd call that a little awkward.